in wrestling, family is pretty important. And there have been many important wrestling families to go around. But out of all the kin to take to the squared circle, there is one family that stands out in the minds of many. From their famous training dungeon to their contributions to the world of professional wrestling throughout multiple generations, they have easily earned their place as a wrestling dynasty. And they've also earned their place as the topic of this episode. Because today, Dave knows the Hart family. Now, my fandom for this famous wrestling clan could not be stated enough, especially with my appreciation for the training and the wrestlers that came out of the famous Hart Family Dungeon. And with that being said, we might as well start things off with the Patriarch and the man behind the dungeon. And since the Hart Family tree is not known for being a small one, we might as well get started as soon as we possibly can. Stu Hart is the man that served as the head of the household for the Hart Family. He was born in 1915 and began his life living off the land and growing up in a tent on the prairie lands of Alberta. As a young man, Stu was a great all-round athlete, trying just about any sport he could, but his true athletic love was submission wrestling, and he began his training in that field with catch wrestling. Now, some of that training included being put into some really grueling submission holds, even going so far as being put into those holds until his head turned blue. But it was this first-hand experience of what submissions could really do that taught Stu quite a lot. And it was this exact method that he would adopt when he started his own teachings in the Hart Family Dungeon. However, after suffering a severe accident with a truck, Stu would end up hospitalized. And by the time he got out, it was just in time for World War II. So Stu enlisted and he became part of the Royal Canadian Navy and from there he became their director of athletics. Now as such, Stu was still looking forward to being used in more of a militaristic capacity, but the Navy preferred having him in their athletics department. This led to him wrestling on a regular basis for the entertainment of the other servicemen, performing before thousands. And this is where Stu Hart, the wrestling performer, was born. Stu then went on to make his professional wrestling debut in New York City in 1946. From there, Stu would wrestle in several territories before founding Stampede Wrestling, which he did with the help of several men he knew during his time in the Navy. Stampede became very successful in Canada and was the home base promotion for much of the Hart family. But that brings me to... Stu and his wife Helen had 12 children, 8 boys and 4 girls. All 8 boys became wrestlers and all the girls married wrestlers. Now the oldest of the Hart children is Smith Hart. Smith made his wrestling debut in 1973 and officially retired in 1991. And while he mostly wrestled for Stampede, he also wrestled for the World Wrestling Council, the International Wrestling Enterprise, and the National Wrestling Alliance, as well as making brief appearances in the WWE. And throughout his time in the ring, he was a WWC Caribbean Tag Team Champion with his brother Brett and was inducted into the Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2001. The second oldest Hart child is Bruce Hart. Bruce headlined for Stampede, sometimes even wrestling while injured. He then moved on to wrestling in England as a Bronco Bruce in joint promotions where he met the wrestler, the Dynamite Kid, and then by extension, the British Bulldog. Bruce then went on to book and wrestle in New Japan. Following the sale of Stampede Wrestling to the WWF, Bruce would then make several appearances for that company as well. Then, in the late 90s, Bruce brought Stampede Wrestling back with other members of his famous family. But this time, the roster would focus on the third generation of hearts, but more on them later. And ever since hanging up his boots, Bruce has since turned his skills into teaching and training. Next up is Keith Hart, who had a reputation as a very gifted amateur wrestler. And of course, he also wrestled for Stampede. And he also got to team with his brothers Bruce, Brett, and Owen at the 1993 Survivor Series. Following him is Wayne Hart, who only wrestled very briefly, but instead was more known for his work as a referee. Then next we have Dean Hart. Now Dean was the first of his brothers to win an amateur wrestling championship. He would also then go on to wrestle professionally for Stampede. Now this led to him traveling with his brothers Brett and Bruce to Dory Funk's promotion in Amarillo, Texas, after becoming close friends with Dory. Now Dean also worked as a referee, as well as behind the scenes, and he also managed to find success outside of the world of professional wrestling as a music promoter. Then comes the oldest girl of the Hart clan, Elizabeth, otherwise known as Ellie, who married Jim the Anvil Nyhart. The Anvil, of course, was known as one half of the tag team, the Hart Foundation, with Brett, and also as a member of the stable of the very same name. Now, Jim was not Canadian, but after being released by the Dallas Cowboys, he made his way up north to Canada and began his work as a professional wrestler in Stampede. From there, he made his way to teaming up with his brother-in-law Brett, joining the WWF, and even tagging with Owen Hart as the new foundation. Nyhart also wrestled for ECW, New Japan, and WCW, and he also appeared in TNA. Now, the 
Anvil and Ellie got divorced in 2001, but they would get remarried again in 2010, and together they had three daughters, one of which is, of course, Natalie Nyhart, otherwise known as Natty Nyhart, also known as Natalia. And Natty went on to marry another professional wrestler, TJ Wilson, also known as Tyson Kidd, who was a close friend of the family and had been ever since he was 10 years old. Next up is Stu and Helen's daughter, Georgia, who married wrestler BJ Annis, who also worked as a professional bodybuilder and wrestled for Stampede. Together they had two daughters and two sons, one of which is Edward Annis, better known as Teddy Hart, who by the way is one of my personal favorites and you've also seen him on this channel. And now, here comes the most well-known member of the Hart family, Brett the Hitman Hart. Now, I could go on and on about Brett, so I will try to keep this brief. Brett began excelling in amateur wrestling at a very early age. It was believed by many that he could have been an Olympic-level wrestler. However, Brett would go on to study filmmaking in college instead, as he was seeking a career with more long-term options than anything the Olympics could possibly offer. He knew that even at its best case scenario, he could only be an Olympic wrestler for a few years before moving on to coaching. Brett was looking for something that he could remain viable in for more than just a brief run. However, he also knew that his father wanted to see him involved in athletics, and so professional wrestling became his best option. From there, Brett, of course, excelled in wrestling for Stampede before going on to the WWF. And it was at that point that Bret Hart would become the star that we all know today. He won a whole host of championships in both the WWF and WCW. He main evented multiple WrestleManias and was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2006. The next child in line is daughter Allison, who married wrestler Ben Bassarab. Following her came Ross Hart. Like his brothers, Ross spent a lot of time in Stampede Wrestling as well as making a few appearances in the WWF. In addition, Ross has also spent a fair amount of time as a booker, promoter, and as a trainer. And it has also been said that Ross is the wrestling historian of the Hart family and has an encyclopedic knowledge of the business. And the next Hart in the family line is Diana Hart. Now, she was married to the British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith, thus putting the Bulldog into the family, as well as by extension his cousin Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid. Diana was also involved herself in a storyline between Brett and the Bulldog going into her SummerSlam match in Wembley Stadium. Also, Diana and the Bulldog's son, Harry Smith, is a professional wrestler himself, who has gone by many names, but is mostly known now as Davy Boy Smith Jr. And finally, we have Owen Hart. The youngest of the Hart family, Owen was known as a gifted technical wrestler. He also wrestled in the independent circuit for a brief period of time before being called up for a brief run in the WWF. Now this run was as the Blue Blazer, the unfortunate gimmick that would eventually lead to his tragic end. However, after that quick run, he then returned to the independent wrestling scene and even spent a brief amount of time in WCW before returning back to the WWF. But this time, he would do so under his real name. During this run, he would win the King of the Ring, the European Championship, Championship, the tag team titles, twice with Yokozuna, and once with the British Bulldog, as well as once with Jeff Jarrett. He also won the Intercontinental title twice, oh, and not to mention, three Slammy Awards. And finally, a few others associated with the Hart family, such as their cousin, Roddy Piper, as well as family friends, such as Brian Pillman and Chris Benoit. Well, there you go, a quick rundown of the Hart family, but what are some of your favorite Hart family moments? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to support this channel over on Patreon, because if we make our monthly goal, Albert is going to have to do a live stream completely gagged up and he won't be able to talk. And if we hit our second goal for the month, then he's gonna have to do these live streams for an entire month. Not just one, but entire month. So go over and check me out over on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.